This is the 25th episode of Fading Memories podcast. I can't believe it. It just feels like I started yesterday. Almost right from the beginning, I got messages from listeners who said I've helped them, and that is the most gratifying message I could ever get. But I also have other people reaching out that want to be a part of the podcast, and that's exciting too. So I've accomplished a lot of what I've already wanted to do, and it really doesn't feel like it's already been 25 episodes. So thank you so much, and stay tuned for today's 25th Podiversary episode. Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. Are you looking for a way to connect with your loved one? Maybe an activity you can do together instead of sitting around answering the same questions over and over again? Have you checked out Two Lap Books yet? If you haven't, you're missing out on something that I am certain you and your loved ones will thoroughly enjoy. Two Lap Books have changed many of the visits I've had with mom tremendously. These simple read aloud books were created specifically for memory challenged adults. You see, people living with Alzheimer's eventually lose their ability to initiate conversation with others. Because of this, these uniquely adapted books, quote, give voice to these loved ones. By using the book's large, simple text and beautiful, colorful illustrations, we can initiate conversations. Most noteworthy, we can make meaningful connections with our loved ones and help stimulate their mind. Caregivers will enjoy sharing these books and creating purposeful, interactive activities for engaging people with memory deficits. Reading these books together could very likely bring out memories you can cherish together. There's a link in the show notes to the My Favorite Things page on my website. The page is linked to the Amazon pages of all my favorite books and products that have helped me with my mom over the years. Definitely check it out. I'm certain you'll find something that will help you like they helped me. That's why I created this page for you. And if you ever run across something that is beneficial to your life and helping you with your loved ones, please let me know. Welcome to part two of Soup on a Plate, my advice and conversation with Robin and Haley about their dad and grandfather. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, Definitely go back and do that because this is the second part of the conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago. I hope you find the advice that we were giving back and forth useful, and I hope you enjoy this episode. So let's jump right back into the conversation. Yeah. You know, now do you take your grandfather out? You know, you said he likes to go out and talk to people. Do you take him out like to the park or anything? No. Is it, yeah. is it too it, hard? It, it's hard. hard, and then I would say he, when I get home from work, he'll usually say, um, when he realizes it's me, he'll usually say, like, oh, you know, I, I got to get to the, the thrift store, and I'll be like, okay, okay, what do you need? And he has no idea. He just wants to get out of the house. So when we do take him, Ten minutes when we're there, he's done. He gets agitated. He wants to leave. Yeah, and it becomes a kind of like a scene, and I I get nervous. Like I feel like, oh, how am I going to handle him? We my brother actually came here from Virginia uh, last sometime last year. I can't remember. It was in um, March or April. No, I have it. I didn't mention this, but I have a book for the first four months that they lived here. I documented everything that happened with my grandfather. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, I remember writing in, like, March or April. That's when that happened. That's when he got all weird when we got there. Yeah, he... Because we don't... I don't know how he's ever going to act. Like, he... My brother, I had not seen him uh, since my other brother had passed away, and that was, like, nine years ago since my dad had lost his leg. And uh, he happened to be here for his mom's birthday um, for one day from Virginia. And so I said, I'm going to take him to go see my brother and, you know, just kind of see how it goes. And 
my dad knew how to get to the house. The house was my dad's when they were married. He had left the house to them, and I had been there several times, and but I just didn't remember how to get there. Mm-hmm. And I had the address slightly wrong in like the Google map or whatnot. And he insisted when I kept making the wrong turn or whatnot, you know, no, it's down here. If I had listened to him, we would have ended up in Mexico. So. <laughs> It's like, it's literally smack dab in front of the border. But I mean, if I, we would have ended up deep far somewhere. So he, he I, it became, I had to pull the car over and I actually, I still feel very bad about it. Haley was in the back seat and I lost my temper with him. I, I screamed at him. I yelled at him because he was yelling at me. He was I was nervous because I hadn't seen my brother in a while. Didn't know he was an act when we got there. I do have a sister, half sister that lives here in Chula Vista, but we don't speak. We haven't spoken since my other brother had passed. And then before that, I hadn't spoken to her since Haley had been born. So she, and she lives maybe like three blocks from here. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's just when my brother passed away, I really tried to reach out because it really, and then literally right at his funeral dad goes to the hospital and loses his leg so it's kind of like I had this weird moment of oh god you know we need to start talking to each other our whole family you know so I tried with her but we're pulled off to the side of the road I'm screaming at him yelling at him and I'm yelling at him like he's a little kid and I'm like I know I'm gonna we're gonna go home you're not we're not gonna even have this visit you're acting like a child and it, it was horrible and Haley's or Haley she's in the back seat listening to her grown mother yell at her very grown father um and I, I mean Haley knows I've been terrified of my dad my whole life he's a military dad you know it's very strict and that right. talk to my dad let alone yell at him and threaten to take him home and he's not gonna have an outing <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I um we ended up finding it, but then when we got there, he acted like a totally different person. He actually did not realize that my sister was even in the house, uh, and he's had a conversation with her. He, uh, she, she didn't. He didn't know who she was. No. Uh. Uh, you were there with me, right? Yeah. yeah. He he was very close with his ex-wife Sandy, mm-hmm. and he didn't know it was her birthday. And he always like when I was little, he would always talk about her because they were like best friends even after the divorce and he didn't know that it was her birthday. Like it was almost like he didn't really talk to her at all. I don't think he realized what was going on. Like he, when you take him out of, you know, house and where there's more chaos and noise and if he's not recognizing the place really, he gets confused or he gets really quiet. And that's when he gets really weird, you know, like I got, it's time to go home. We got to go home. And so we limit the outings because of that, but yet I feel very guilty. I feel very, um, I don't know. It's very selfish that, I don't know. I'm struggling with that. Haley knows, like, I, when when I get home from work and he wants to go somewhere, it's like, well, why don't we just go to the park and take him to go sit or whatnot? But it's hard to deal with him out and about. And it's not always about, like, how he's going to act. It's also, is it wheelchair accessible? Is it going to be too hard to get the wheelchair there? He doesn't yeah. act like he's disabled, so <laughs> he yeah. um, he always wants to do projects and that require two legs or, <laughs> like, just very complicated things. Or, like I said, he was driving up until a year ago with just his one leg one and leg. Oh my. Alzheimer's. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I I was kind of the same way with my mom, like, like not, not long after my dad died. Okay, my dad died March second last year. We moved her in March sixteenth. I think like March thirtieth. I mean, literally, I had to take her to the dentist. Now she's like fifteen minutes from me, and the dentist is five minutes down the hill. So it's like fifteen minutes from her back to the dentist, and. All the way, it was like, where are we going? And, you know, just, like, snotty. And it was so frustrating because it's like, she didn't remember that I told her five times. And I had kind of gotten to the point where I'm like, I am not taking this lady out because five minutes down the road, and she's just annoying. And after spending all winter 
with her and the other residents in the, you know, care community, I was like, I can't do this anymore. So it was like one day in February, I just put her in the car. We're not far, or her place, well, both places. She's not far from a regional park. And I just said, you know what, let's just just, just get out of here, go for a little drive, go look at the hills, and the trees, and the sky. She's always talking about, oh, I love the sky. And I look up, and it's just blue. There's no clouds. There's no nothing. It's like, eh, it's blue. You know? <laughs> okay, it's blue today. That's nice. You know. And so I thought, well, she'll really enjoy that. So we, we drove up. It was pretty cold and windy, so I, we didn't get out of the car. And she loved it. And I'm like, okay. You know, about six, seven minutes from her place. And, of course, she tells me, oh, you know, it's. It, I look around and everything has changed so much and everything's grown so much. And it's like, yeah, 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 it hasn't changed in 20 years, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, I don't tell her that. I just think it. And I, I just agree with her. And we, you know, three minutes down the road, we're in the hills and the trees. And so after a couple of those trips, I'm like, okay, we're okay. And then... It warmed up, and we went back, and she and I walked around because she's still very mobile. And, oh, yeah. you know, and it's not like we have to go on a big hike because you know we can walk in a circle, and she's happy. Right. And then the following week, she, my husband and I we didn't have rotary, so we went and just had a picnic lunch. And he had to hightail. He's a realtor, so he had to run off. And she and I just wandered around again and looked at the trees and the sky. <laughs> You know, I'm always laughing because she loves to look at the sky. And so then I'm like, okay, well, I like variety. So this, I'm thinking, okay, well, we've been up here several times. So there's another, see, that's a regional park. Or is that a state park? I don't know. There's a lot of parks. It's just kind of like the same with you guys. So I thought, okay, it's hot. Let's go to this other park that has, it's on a reservoir and they have a pool. Well, the pool actually has what they call those beach entrances. Mm -hmm. And so I paid for us to go in and, you know, it was a hot summer day. And so it was just full of kids. And I convinced her. We just sat on the edge of the pool. We walked in. It was a little weird because it had sand. It was mm -hmm. it was a pool. It was chlorinated, but it had sand. And that was even, even weird for me to walk across because it just didn't quite, you know, it looked like a pool, but felt like the ocean. It was weird. And we just sat on the edge of the pool and watched the kids play. And she talked about the kids playing. And my sister and I used to be on the swim team when we were younger. And so we talked a little bit about that. And I thought, okay, this is good. Now, she did grump because, you know, the back of her, her pants were soaked. And I'm like, whatever, mine are too. You're at least going home. You know, I have to, I have to go even farther to go change my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my sister did buy a swimsuit for her. And of course, I haven't been able to take her out because it's been really hot and smoky. And now it's been cool. So I'm like, then I took them to, like I said, the city park where they can watch the kids in the splash zone. So I'm, And that's further away. That's more like 20 minutes from her spot. So, But she was with her friend. So I, I, I just take her out like in kind of like controlled situations. We've gone to Starbucks a couple times because... Sometimes the chaos with the renovation and the other residents, it's like, I can only deal with one or two of you at a time. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm like, I can't deal with all of you. I'm leaving. I'm taking mom and we're going to Starbucks for some tea or something. And I'm finding that those outings are a little bit easier. I don't know if it's because I'm used to them or we've kind of worked up kind of like, you know, building up your fitness. It's like, We've gone, we've done these things, and, and they've been pretty controlled. Like when we go to the regional park, um, there's an old mining cave, and it's not open during, during the week. So we, I don't have to worry about other people. Occasionally we'll see a ranger, but for the most part, it's mom's hiking or, you know, it's, or it's just really quiet. And it's just somebody's like, oh, you brought her back? And I'm like, ooh, that's morbid. And yes, I thought about it, but no, I brought her back. <laughs> and it's just I, somebody that when I took the two ladies out, they, people were like, you didn't just leave them there. And I'm like, no, I didn't leave them there. <laughs> no. But I'm wondering if like maybe when, you know, maybe Haley could just walk him around the, you know, push him around this block. You got yeah. like any neighbors he could just yak at for a few minutes? Uh, kind of. I'm not sure. Like if our neighbors really want to talk to him. Our, we live in a really weird ghettoy neighborhood 
one Jay. neighbor that kind of talks to us, but it's not, I'm not sure if they would really want to put up with him talking about the same thing every time. I'm not sure if they're patient. Oh, that particular person is very strange. So, like, oh. well, she's friendly, so she... Oh, not that no. neighbor. Oh. <laughs> that's just the only one I talked to she's very bizarre but very nice um but she the other the thing that the other thing we're struggling with is I I do want um because Haley's home uh earlier than I am and it's still light outside when she gets home and my other half is here um when Haley gets home and I was telling him that uh, cause he leaves, it would be, it's hard for her to get that wheelchair out the door, but, um, mm-hmm. Desi, my boyfriend, husband, he, um, could get him out the door and then, you know, she could take him cause where we live, it's a huge block of nothing but this huge apartment complex. And then if you go over a block, it's very nice residential, quiet area and the sidewalks, nice and even. Um, and then there's a park slash marina like right on the corner from us um so i was thinking that with it now it's finally cooling off um it would be nice for her and he'd love that because he he actually uh, how can i put this he talks about Haley and knows Haley more than me at the moment uh like he talks to me about me as if i'm not me uh, that's weird <laughs> yeah and Having Haley in the house, because when I was Haley's age, I, we looked alike. Um, he, I think it really confuses him because he thinks she's me, but then gets weirded out because then I walk in the room and I'm an older me. So <laughs> that is probably pretty trippy for him. Yeah, I've seen him take double takes in a way of just... Haley was at, um, I think you were at a football thing at the high school. I was at an orchestra concert. Yeah. And And I was, when they first got here, I was on the kick of everybody's going to eat at the table like family, my mom, my dad, and you're, you know, this and that. So I'm standing behind my dad getting ready to serve him. And he says, it was a lot of, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Where he said, where's Haley? And I'm like, oh, she's at a um, school event. And then he said, oh, I guess that's where our little one is, too. And it's like he almost, like, I don't know what he, it, it, it confused me. And then it kind of scared me at the same time. So, And then um, there was a time that he didn't realize it was me. And he was talking very bad about me, like, oh. to, to me about how I'm, I'm basically a pain in the butt. I treat him like a baby sometimes and, you know, like. <laughs> and when he looked up and he's and he really noticed it he was he just kind of was quiet and i'm like i know i'm a pain in the, the butt dad it's it's okay <laughs> and he just like he wheeled himself into the other room real quick <laughs> like whoops <laughs> yeah. i'm like okay um so i i want i think for Haley to take him out and about it he since he connects with her more at the moment it would be really good for him he'd really enjoy it so if you took him over to the marina like take one of your school books because he might want to just sit there and look at the water being a navy man you know and of course after about 10 minutes you'd be like okay i'm done with this so if you just sat there and worked on homework or whatever and he could just stare at the water that might i don't know might be a good thing to try yeah. Before they moved in, we would, whenever we went and we visited them at their house, like 15 minutes away, we would always find him staring outside of his window, just people watching. They yeah, understood people watching. what was so fun about looking at his neighbors taking out the trash. <laughs> well, he loved it. He loved seeing the kids ride their scooters, someone taking out their trash. He loved looking at them. And I didn't understand, like, what's so special about that? It's a window. Yeah. yeah. We had several little neighborhood kids in there before we moved him in here with us. Um, he had a pile of trash because he still tried to clean and do, you know, normal household yeah, stuff. Um, and he piled the trash out on his balcony, and I don't know how, but for a good year, he had these two kids. I don't even know if he was paying them or not. He um, did. To come by, and I'd be in their kitchen. I see these two kids just reaching over their balcony, grabbing their trash, and throwing it away for them. And 
So he like he's very friendly. He makes little friends everywhere. Like, whoa. I want to assume also, isn't there a veterans center? Some there's got to be multiple there, ones down there. There is. There's a the veterans. There's a veterans home kind of up the hill by my old work uh, near the hospital. Yeah. Um, and there's another senior veterans uh, center aside from that, but I can't get him to do anything associated with um, the VA. That's Even, weird. Yeah. He, like the doctor that he sees, the, he doesn't realize it, but he's not going to be seeing that doctor anymore, um, Dr. Ryan. He, rather than, he's got Medicare TRICARE, which everybody takes that, so it's great insurance. He could see anybody he wanted. So, But rather than staying in the TRICARE and with NAVCARE, he chose a community clinic doctor in a very in Imperial Beach, very ghetto community clinic. I don't know why. It's not even like a family practice type doctor. So and I didn't realize that either until maybe two, three years ago that she wasn't like, I don't know, where I work. I work with mainly older patients and it's a small office and it's got one doctor, but he's a, like a community where things get lost. You it's a community clinic. It's a walk-in clinic type thing. Okay. That's interesting. So, yeah. And so that particular doctor, uh, when my dad finally, when the neurologist acknowledged the Alzheimer's and we had a follow-up with the primary to let her know everything that was going on, um, she's not helpful at all. So I, I need to switch him primaries. She... I told her he's in diapers right now because he, or pull-ups, because um, the incontinence, both bladder and stool, is just ridiculous. And it's a lot of money out of pocket. So I had told her, you know, like at my work, I do orders all the time. There's certain companies that, you know, they won't provide for the whole month, but your insurance will pay for some of it. Um, she refused to basically write the order or really help us. She was like, well, that's not really in my department. I'm like, you're his primary care doctor. I'm like, hello. So we don't have, as far as doctors, we don't like for him. We don't have a lot of resources. And that goes back to us really like as far as taking them out for outings. The other thing that's a problem for him, and I don't, I don't want people to look at us and think that we're not the caregivers to him. I feel like people would look and say, God, oh, don't you take care of him or clean him? Or, But people don't understand, like, I can't get him in the shower. We can't get him to, to stay cleanly. I To wash his hands, to... Before he moved in here, I don't think he had showered for no six months. It, it was like... What are you? Are you at least towel washing? You know, and I would ask my mom, "What the hell's going on?" You know, and so she wasn't helping him at all. No, asking, like, hey, did you shower today? It, or even asking if he's eaten. Yeah, it wasn't a really mutual relationship in that house. If he has like a an accident, he will take off the diaper that's soiled with like stool. I don't know how he managed this, but, and I'm trying to get it into like a controlled setting in their room. Um, I have a couple of ideas, but he somehow manages to take off this stool filled diaper with very watery stool, gets it on his back. I don't know how. It's all over the bathroom. There's like a, a jacuzzi of it. And oh, goodness. Then I've got the bipolar mom walking in there like nothing's wrong. I'm like, do you not look at the ground? What's going on in here? And so to get him to, without embarrassing him or like belittling him, it's like, we'll say to him, like, Dude, you're, you're full. Like, you need to change your, your pull up or whatnot. And he's still lucid enough to know that he's not in that. He's not catatonic. He's not not unable to speak or communicate with us type thing. You know what I mean? So it's like we, um, if I could get him in the shower, get him dressed, have him brush his hair and, you know, things like that, or at least let us do it, that getting him out and about also would be, and because the odor 
that comes from the wheelchair or the clothing mm. is I've thrown away about five loads of laundry that are not savable. Oh boy. So and I'm like, I that, don't know how to do, you know, address have, that. We have to take them out to go buy like new shorts and new yeah. pants. Yeah. And tired after finding like one pair of shorts that took 10 minutes and then that gets frustrating yeah i've taken my mom shopping a couple times it's not fun and because she's lost weight and you guys know shopping for women's clothes is much harder than men's but i I do have one suggestion that somebody um i don't know where i learned it but instead of saying you know hey you need to do x is ask them you know hey dad can you change your clothes for me because I got to do a load of laundry. So if you ask them in a way that they think they're helping you is something that's been strongly suggested for, you know, people like our parents. Um, I don't have to worry about the diapers yet because my mom's still not in that stage, (laughs) thankfully. I do know there was a gal, the gal that did live next door to her, She was in her 90s and on a walker, and she had the pull-ups. And sometimes if she was wet, she'd go find... Sometimes she'd come find me, but she'd generally find the caregiver and say, oh, you know, I wet myself, I need to be changed. Mm -hmm. So she got to the point where, you know, she she wasn't embarrassed to tell people that she needed assistance. And then one gal is always hollering that she needs to be... I need to go to the bathroom. (laughs) I don't know how they determine when she really does need to go from when she doesn't, but that's, that's not in my job description for helping in the, in the (laughs) residence. So it's like, I give hugs. I help with a lot of stuff, but yeah, I draw the line there. I don't even help my mom with that stuff (laughs) because she doesn't need it. But when, when I was there this week, her shirt had stuff on it. And then after I finally convinced her that a three-quarter, it was like a lightweight sweater, really heavyweight kind of like shirt. It's like a combination sweater, t-shirt kind of thing. When I finally convinced her that it was hot, and let's take that off, I then noticed that her pants were dirty. So I know that she argues with the care staff when they try to get her to wear certain things. And I haven't seen her for a while. They Unfortunately, it's such a hard job. There's a lot of turnover. But the one gal that was there, um, the one day she came up to me and she said, you know, your mama needs new clothes. Her clothes are too big for her. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> she was really cute. Um, so I know that they make suggestions because she was trying to get my mom to put on other stuff that fit better. Mm-hmm. And my mom was just basically not having it. So it's it's I've learned from them too it's like sometimes you just have to ask for them to help you Mm -hmm. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes like if she's wearing a long sleeve sweater and we're going out and it's 100 degrees I'm like mom trust me it's hot out you don't want to be wearing this shirt just just put this one on for me I like this color you know just just do it and then she'll say something like aye aye (laughs) ma'am it's like okay whatever just do it I don't care what you call me so, but yeah, it's really hard. But then um, I have a friend that whose mom was my mom's other side neighbor. And she said one of the best things that she did and the advice that she gave to people was if you're considering a care facility, do it sooner rather than later. Because she says you won't regret it. Because she would go every day. I guess she was checking on her mom at lunch. She's a teacher. So she'd call mom at lunch, in the morning, at lunch, and after work. And she was so stressed out and so exhausted. She, when they, they put her in the assisted living, and then I think she was there for like three or four months, and she had a stroke. So she ended up in the memory care. And unfortunately, back in the end of June, a new resident, I don't know exactly what happened. Um, somebody else with memory witnessed it. The new resident pushed her mom over. And her mom's 92 and on a walker, and it broke her leg. And this gal's siblings were not super thrilled. They were they had very high expectations of the care community, which they're not cheap, so that wasn't unreasonable. But, you know, they, you still are dealing with 25 people who don't have 
you know, a lot of control or a lot of memories. They don't know what they're doing. So it's, you know, like I've had people come hand me shoes. They need their shoes put on. I'm like, okay. You know, I mean, I just think of it. I'm there to help too, but they didn't feel that way. So they moved her into a board and care home, which is probably fine because she would just, she was one of the ones my mom would sit around and talk with. And it was funny because her mom thought my mom was a gal that she worked with. And so she would talk to my mom about work stuff. And my poor mom would try to follow along. And you could just see my mom was so confused. And it was cute. But it's, you know, that was her advice was if you're contemplating it, just pull the Band-Aid off and do it. Because it's never easy, which I can attest to. And it's not, you know, it's, she said it was the best thing they ever did. And I need to reconnect with her. I haven't talked to her for a few weeks since her mom moved and see how everything's going. And I'm going to take my mom over there because it's not far from my house. So I get to do the round and round in the car with my mom. (laughs) And, you know, just kind of, you know, find out how they're doing and how the transition went. But uh, that was the one thing that stuck with me was she said, you know, just do it. Because I had decided that's where my mom needed to go was a memory community. And, of course, they always have a waiting list, and then my dad dies. So I called them and said, hey, my dad passed away two days ago, so we're going to, you know, whenever there's an opening, and they're like, oh, well, we just happen to have an opening now. And it's like, ah, um, hmm, okay. (laughs) Wasn't ready to move mom in quite so soon. And they're like, you know what? It might just be easier. And they were totally right. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know... It's uh, doing this podcast. I've learned a lot of advice from other people that I wish I'd known before, and so I try to pass it along as much as possible. But yeah, so he's been with you like nine months. I would think if if you could get him into a really regimented routine like he had in the military, that might help too. Right? Who knows? I was, I was telling them because I'm at work all day. I was telling Desi, my um, other half, that. Hey. You kind of have to remove mom from the equation because she kind of doesn't, um, I guess, it's very difficult with her. Um, But I was telling my um, dad or Desi that if we had like a a time that he woke up and, you know, then it's going to be breakfast and get him, you know, sitting up in bed at least and washing the face and just like a routine like he would do in like like the military. and I think that's what they do in the care communities. Because I know on Mondays is mom's shower day. I don't know if there's another one. I, I showed up on a Monday and her wedding ring was missing and she was frantic. And, um, of course, you know, they would have preferred me not to have left the wedding ring with mom. But I'm like, hey, my dad just died. I'm not yanking it off her finger. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I think because she'd lost weight, you know, they were getting too big. I think she took them off and set them down because they had found them. Her, that and the sapphire ring in another resident's room. So I have them, you know. And so I knew from talking to them about, like, did she have them on this morning? That kind of stuff, that her showers are on Monday. But I think they must, I know, like, at dinner time, they'll say, hey, you know, we're getting, you know, it's dinner, come on. And I think they have a specific routine. And lunch is at noon, and I'm assuming they must get them up before breakfast or else I don't know how that works. One of these days I'll have to ask. But I think that's how it works in the communities is there's – it's – certain things are very scheduled, and then there's free time for them to do whatever they want. So I don't know if that would help with him. It, it can, can't hurt to try. Blah. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, it's worth a shot. I mean, anything's worth a shot just to kind of make things easier. And I just want him to have, you know, a good quality of life for however long. I mean, you know, he's still around. He's still kicking and stubborn. And I think that's what will keep him going. And I really feel like he's going to be around to 90, just, you know, whether he's with it or not, you know. Yeah. I wonder the same thing about my mom. Because her mom lived to 91 with Alzheimer's, but she did not end up with it until she was the age my mom is now. So I had her at the neurologist in April, and I said, you know, between renting out mom's house and her Social Security and the investments my dad had, we think, 
you know, we have enough money to keep her there and happy and safe for the rest of her life, which we kind of assumed would be like 18 years. I'm thinking, you know, just dealing. I mean, she's lost weight and they eat all the time. They have breakfast, lunch and dinner. They have snacks after lunch. I mean, there's always food there. And my mom loses weight. It's, like, so frustrating. I walk by the kitchen and gain weight. So it's, like, yeah. so frustrating. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and I don't know if that's because... I don't, I'm not sure why she's lost weight other than I do know it's part of the disease. Yeah. And he... And so I kind of thought more like 10 years because I know that she's, she's had this for, like, at least 13, 14 years and maybe longer. I have never talked to anybody or met anybody whose parent or other loved one has had Alzheimer's and lived as long as my mom has lived. So it's it's kind of frustrating because <laughs> um, we think she actually started showing signs in 1995. Wow. Because we had a business together and she would take orders from clients and not write down when they were expecting to pick it up. Or what the heck we were supposed to do. And she said, well, I assumed I would do it, so it didn't matter. Well, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But that's something that kept happening more and more. So now when you look back on it, you're like, oh, I wonder if that was a sign. Yeah, yeah. So you figure that was like June of 1995 is when I remember thinking. That's like when I remember that really starting. And here it is, September 1st of 2018. So that's, let's see, my daughter's almost 27. So that was like 23 years ago. Yeah. No, thank you. Wow. (laughs) The neurologist said that she might not live 10 years because what happens is they... They lose the ability to chew properly, and they aspirate small amounts of food, and they get pneumonia. And I am her health power of attorney, and I had made the decision a year ago that if she got pneumonia, I was just going to call hospice, because why would I... It's easily fixed, but why would I do that to her? I know I've known from conversations we had way back, you know, 20 years ago, she didn't want to be like her mom. And she is. So I feel like as hard as that will be, that's the right choice to just let her go. But I don't know. She's pretty stubborn like my dad. My dad was diabetic and on hospice for two and a half months. And just he did not want the hospice nurse or the care staff, you know, the in-home care people to help him. Oh. oh boy, you know, because he didn't realize that he was dying. He thought he was just trying to get over whatever the flu or a cold or whatever. Right. Right. So right. he didn't want help, and it was it was a struggle. So I can it's, that's military men for you. <laughs> yes, yes, because I think my dad thinks the same thing. I think he because he'll talk about uh, we didn't know he was diabetic until after he had lost his leg, but he. Um, uh, oh my god, I lost what I was gonna say. He um he denied that he's diabetic. Oh yeah, he mm-hmm. does. No. And he'll tell me, no, my lab tests were were good. Um my diabetes is gone. And I'm like, no, Dad, it's because you're on meds and your blood's level. <laughs> like, oh, I wonder if that was part of the memory loss too. I he and that's the other thing, like when uh when before when he wouldn't tell us about his appointments, I know forever he was borderline diabetic. I'm pretty sure that at some point that doctor told him you are diabetic and wanted to start him like on metformin, um, but he never did and he never told us about it. He was very stubborn about it. the whole diabetes thing. I'm not diabetic. It's not going to happen. And it, it didn't help with him with the, uh, the whole blood clot thing in his leg either. So that's a combination of diabetes and his part. Yeah. For me, it was also like I was when I would be like sitting at the dining room table, and my grandpa is talking to my mom about like his health. It was always to me like, why won't you listen to her? She's she's a medical assistant (laughs) and your daughter. She knows it. I know nothing. (laughs) Yeah. I that's how my my dad was kind of like that, especially at the end. It was it was kind of hard. Could you switch him to your doctor, the one you work for? I 
honestly, I love the doctor I work for. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want her taking care of them. Oh, okay. Cause I'm thinking that would, you could just, I'm sure you could come up with a good story as to why it helps you to go for him to go to her. But if you don't yeah. want it, then <laughs> there, there's a, um, I do have a doctor in mind though. Um, and it's a doctor I did used to work for. And he actually, he somewhat remembers that time of my life when I worked for that doctor. Somehow he still remembers that. Mm. That's around the time that he lost his leg. So around 2012 is when he, because he still thinks it's about 2012. Yeah. So he, um, yeah, 2012-ish. Uh, he knew that doctor just from me talking about him, and he liked that time in his life. So he'll be receptive, I'm hoping. My grandfather and I would always go to pick up my mom. So, what, like, those are, like, the memories that he can kind of remember because he'd always, like, have me hold the door open for all the patients, and, like, he would mm-hmm. bring my mom coffee and hot chocolate to work. So he always, like, somewhat remembers, like, you know, taking his granddaughter to go pick up his daughter from work and the the road that we went down. It's just, it really yeah, likes that. Right. That's cool. You could probably come up with some good reason why it's a benefit to you if he goes and sees this guy or, you know, I'm sure you can come up with some, some excuse. Yeah. That's the one thing I just, I find with my mom, I try not to like get offended when she doesn't remember that I'm her daughter. And my sister and I are like literally polar opposites. She's, you know, I'm blonde. She's dark hair. I don't tan. She tans without trying you know, she's got dark chocolate brown eyes. I've got green eyes. So it's like, it can't possibly be that difficult to realize that who's who. Yeah. And, but- you know, and then when she's always referring to my dad as her husband, it's like, you know, she would never talk about him that way to me before. So it's kind of sad. But yeah. I just, sometimes I tease her and sometimes I just go along with it. Occasionally I'll correct her because, you know, not that it helps. It helps me. It doesn't help her. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you know, I try to create a reality for her that works to keep everybody happy because if she's not happy then I'm not happy and you know like when I went a couple weeks ago and the rug was missing and I it was so hard not to get just I was so frustrated I was like seriously and my husband kept reminding me well you know don't invite mom to our reality and I'm like well the reality is it's occasionally she's gonna need new things because stuff wears out you know, I can't have her giving away things because she doesn't recognize them, you know, when she needs new smaller clothes or she needs new towels or whatever. It's like, you know, I understand she doesn't recognize them and I don't, I try not to change her room at all. I did buy a different chair, another chair because she just had the one chair and then sitting on her, she's a day bed. And I'm like, sitting on the day bed is not comfortable. And her friend loves the chair, so that it was either the day bed or the floor. And mm-hmm. I'm too old to sit on the floor. So I found on Facebook a, a chair, So and my mom loves it. So I'm like, okay, great. And we put the other rug down. Everything was so nice, and her and her friend loved it. And then pff, the next week, it's like, I'm surprised the chair wasn't somewhere else. <laughs> and I was so frustrated. It was just like, oh, my God. I just wanted to, like, just yell at her and I knew that wouldn't do any good and I was and I knew she could tell I was frustrated I was trying really hard to rein it in and it just it wasn't working that day so I can I can relate to that day that you wanted to leave them on the side of the road yes (laughs) these are all the best thing is is they don't remember when we get upset with them I I I hope not (laughs) I mean unless you unless it's regular which you know, would be, is not yeah. good. It's understandable, but you know, I would think if it's not a regular thing and it's just every so often you just lose it because we're human. Right. I don't, I don't think they remember, you know, cause they don't remember two minutes ago. So true. That's like I, true. I have a funny story. It was about a year ago, the med techs and the executive director and I had put a program in place to feed her dog in the morning and in the evening, the appropriate amount of food so the dog could lose weight because she was so heavy she couldn't clean herself. Uh-huh. So we won't get into disgusting dog habits when they can't take care of their back ends 
Yes. And, you know, the carpet is convenient. Yeah. And, you know, and it was like, and it's not good for the dog. And it was just the whole scenario was not good. I was trying to put the dog in my mom's room because they were getting seated for dinner. And this one gal, her name, I shouldn't mention her name. She's really sweet. But everything she lays her eyes on is hers. Ah. I mean, I, I would do my mom's nails, so my purse and the bag of, like, nail stuff would be on the table in the dining room. And this gal, like I said, super sweet. She would run off with my stuff. And I'm like, oh, no. And I've had to wrestle her for it. So I I'm all, always keep an eye on her and my belongings so that I don't lose them. Well, she had decided on this day that the dog was hers. And she was very upset that I was stealing her dog. And my mom kept saying, no, it's my dog. And I'm trying to shove this, you know, super obese dog in my mom's room and and ignore the other two ladies so I have my back to them. And the next thing I know I hear, if you touch me one more time, I'm going to knock your block off. And I thought, oh, great. I'm about to have an old lady brawl. <laughs> So I abandoned the dog. I don't even remember what happened to the dog. The dog probably was like, yes, I win. I'm running to the dining room. And my mom's room is directly across the hall from the doorway to the uh, courtyard, which was great with the dog, but nobody ever remembered to let The dog couldn't go in and out on her own. So I literally shoved my mom out into the courtyard. She's so angry. She's shaking. And I'm thinking, this is not good because I'm just picturing the phone call where my mom, you know, slugs this old lady in, and could you please move your mom out? I'm like, I was just terrified. She'd only been there like, this was last September, so she'd been there since the middle of March, so not very long. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh. And so I just kept talking to her. I'm like, oh, it's so sad. She's she's so confused and so old and, and she thinks Misty is hers. And I just kept like, I kept trying to like, use empathy oh it's so sad that her brain is so bad you know it's like mom. not that mom's is any good but you yeah. know and after about two minutes my mom calmed down she wasn't shaking anymore and she started asking me like when's dinner and I thought okay thank god we're past that you know we're you know and she always was wary of this other woman she is a little hard to deal with because she's always kind of like snatching things like a little kid is like no that's mine and so my mom didn't like her but at least they didn't have any fist fights oh my goodness oh, the funny thing was i came home and my dad had signed them up for the nra and uh, i come home and there's this great big like a six by eight postcard addressed to my mom and it's like black background with red letters and it was just like this aggressive piece of junk mail and it said free gun i'm like yeah that's what my mother needs just go off oh the God. other lady i was like oh yeah yeah this just, just it was at least a humorous end to the afternoon but oh i don't think my mom other than being wary of this other woman i don't think she ever remembered that whole brawl where she threatened to knock her block off <laughs> which i thought was Oh, it was crazy. I I, got, I came home and I was just like, I was literally expecting the phone call of, well, your mother beat up so-and-so, so could you please move her out tomorrow? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but that's how I was terrified that's what was going to happen. <laughs> right. No, they, they can get kind of crazy in the, like, in the home. When I did my rotation at, um, well, it was more of like a, a convalescent home mm -hmm. where they're not really independent I, I guess and the, the you had your combination of people that were, were somewhat there and then not so there and you know you're told don't interrupt them if they're just you know don't do anything and the arguments that they would have the the snatching of things because it's mine or the um there were some really crazy little fights between the, the little older people in that facility that I did that rotation at it was Funny, but not funny. Yeah, that yeah. reminds me, my grandpa, He what did he have in the back of the car? He put, like, a crowbar in the back of the car, and, like, we didn't know it was there. Oh, a freaking hatchet? Yeah. Oh, my. Weapons in the back of the car that uh, we didn't know was there until we went to, like, 
we put didn't... laundry in the back of the trunk no, or something? No, um, a co-worker found it. A, a oh, tiny no. co-worker uh, at that. Um, she was crawling into the back of the, the car to put help me put a shelf in there. She pulls out a, a crowbar, and she's like, oh, okay. And then she's like, all right, put it aside. And then she's like, what the hell? She pulls out this, like, a hatchet. And I'm like, oh, my God. And she puts it aside. And she pulls out a freaking shovel. And I'm like, oh, oh no. my God. There's duct tape. There's bungee cords and rope. And I'm a tarp. And she's just, like, looking at me like, what were you planning on doing? I'm like, my dad must have had a weird paranoid oh, moment. Okay. And he shoved a bunch of that stuff in the car. Yeah, that sounds like he was planning on... Killing and burying somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, God. It was so embarrassing. It was just embarrassing. Let's see, though, those are the funny things you can laugh about now. Because, like, that day with the dog and the whole threatening to knock the lady's block off, which is kind of a funny... I mean, that's a like really old-school yeah. saying. And, you know, I was like... It was, I literally was terrified. I think I shook all the way home because I, I was convinced they were going to kick her out. I thought my mom was going to punch this woman. And this other woman is smaller. Um, and I, I was just like, oh, this is just great. You know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my mom. She's not moving in with me and she's going to get kicked out. <laughs> and now it's just this funny story that I've told like dozens of times, you know, and it's, you know, and she has, I haven't heard her threaten to knock anybody's block off since then, and it's been almost a year, so I guess we're doing okay. She's still there. She's still happy. Oh. So, you know, it's just, it's definitely difficult, but finding the humor, you know, even if it's just five seconds of humor every day is super helpful because if that not, that you might just run screaming into the street and fling yourself into the ocean since you're close to the... Yep, yep. You know, it's like, it's it's so hard, and... That's why I like talking to people about their family members because everybody's different. Everybody's stories are different and unique, and I think it helps other people to hear, and I hope I've helped you today. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And if you have any more articles you want to share with me, Haley, I'm going to post yours, the one that you sent me on the show notes so people can read it. It's funny because I was on Twitter the other day, and this guy said, who knew you could eat yogurt with a fork but that's where i'm at and it's just just a <laughs> yeah. random guy and i said um what did i put something like oh you know real life struggles right and he's you know and he sends me a gift i was just like just this little tiny little interaction of funny and i'm like it reminded me of your story about your grandfather with the soup on the plate because you know you know i think yogurt with a fork is not terribly difficult but you know, you have to kind of think about it, and you know, you could probably eat some soups off a plate, but not obviously tomato soup. Right. So you know, and that'll probably be a story that you'll remember for a long time and laugh at. You know, I hope so. But I really appreciate you guys talking to me on this beautiful Saturday. Oh no, we appreciate it. Um, you reaching out to us and allowing us to talk to you. Really Thank you. Well, Haley reached out to me, and I I was like. When I realized that you were a teenager, I was like, oh, I have to talk to her. Like, oh, I probably should ask, ask her mom if we could talk to each other. <laughs> like, I don't want some random weirdo, like, contacting your kid, right? <laughs> no, and she could tell me about it. I'm like, what are you talking about? I hadn't really, um, she didn't, I didn't know about the, the, the article until it was fully completed and, and whatnot. So I, I was, when I read it, I was reading it for the first time and got to read from her point of like how she sees it for the first time so it was interesting well i read it right before i went to bed so it was kind of a neat story to end the day kind of thing so because you know doing the podcast there's days when i feel like it's all alzheimer's all the time and then like i have to deal with like mom's got a doctor appointment on tuesday and you know i was dealing with the new hairdresser and getting that all situated and it's like oh my god it's like, I do photography as a living. That's how I make money. And it's like, can somebody please come let me take their picture? <laughs> I'm done with Alzheimer's for the day. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's crazy. But, you know, if you guys have any questions, just reach out. You can Skype me or email me. Like, I think Haley knows every way to get I find it very useful to talk to other family members about their challenges and struggles and 
tell them about mine. Sometimes doing this gives us the opportunity to find solutions to some of our similar problems or even They may have experienced what I'm going through and they can help me or vice versa. So I hope you got the same thing from this conversation, some ideas on what you can and maybe should try with your loved one. We know everybody with memory loss is different, which makes it very difficult to find solutions sometimes. So I'm going to keep trying to help you out and I hope it works. You guys have a fantastic week, and I will talk to you again next Tuesday. Definitely check out the show notes or even the webpage for each episode. I include a lot of additional useful information every week. And definitely check out the My Favorite Things page because I created that specifically so that you did not have to hunt down some of the best books and tools to utilize with your loved one. Now, stay tuned at the end of the episode because I've got something special coming up for you again. There's so much useful information out there and so much we need to know to take care of our parents and our own families. And I know sometimes it's really hard to gather all this information together in a short period of time in a way you can access easily. And that's the whole point of this podcast. I share what I've learned taking care of my parents and especially my mom and all the researching of information I do for these podcast episodes. I hope you're finding them useful and hopefully a little entertaining as well. If you are, could you do me a favor? Can you go to Apple iTunes and leave a rating or even a quick review? This is how new people find my podcast, and I can't be a supportive podcast if people don't know about me. As always, I'll chat with you again next week. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life serving others the way they prefer to be treated and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. If you've listened to the last two episodes, then you've heard a promo of one of my favorite independent podcasts, Pipin' Hot Tea. It's funny, it makes me laugh, and it gets me started on a great note every time I listen to it. So stay tuned and definitely check them out. Hey everyone, I'm Vince. And I'm Emily, and we are hosts of Piping Hot Hot Tea. Piping Hot Tea is a comedy podcast where we discuss anything and everything. You will not find another podcast like us. We bring you fresh, new, off-the-wall topics that are relatable and fun. You can listen to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter for episode updates, debates, and so much more. If you want to connect with us, use the hashtag Piping Hot Podcast. You may hear us fight sometimes because we pretty much fight in every episode. Seriously? Did you have to bring that up in the promo? What? Honestly. Did you... Okay, well, you might as well just end it. Okay. Okay.